on this episode of Imagine, Create, Inspire. For best traditional R&B performance. And the Grammy goes to Leon Bridges, Bet Ain't Worth a Hand, and How Deep Is Your Love, PJ Morton featuring Yeba. I want to thank Morton Records, my band who played on this, uh, Brian, Ed, uh, Dave Crenshaw played that night. You are listening to Imagine, Create, Inspire, the podcast. Join host Bruce Andrews in conversations with creatives. Every artist has a story and the struggle is real to stay inspired and in the flow. Join in the conversation by leaving us your comments and thanks for listening. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast, Imagine, Create, and Inspire. You know, our theme is three words in a very deliberate sequential order. Imagine, Create, and Inspire. Imagination leads to creation and creation leads to inspiration. And inspiration, when you properly apply it, Dave, produces hope. And hope is a commodity. Hope is fuel for the human soul. So if you think about it that way, I mean, inciting the imagination and creating art is not a second-tier um, activity. It's not um, trivial. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's mission critical. So, you know, getting people to imagine, create, and inspire, yeah. however they're inspired to create art or solutions to problems, it's mission critical, man. We need more of it. Oh, yeah. So this, this, uh, these conversations we're having are all about the creative flow. How to stay in the creative flow because it ain't always easy, is it, Dave? It's not. It's not at all. I got with me uh, as our guest today, uh, my good friend, mm -hmm. Dave Crenshaw. Uh, I've known. I'm fortunate to know Dave uh, for a, I don't know, better than a decade now. Yes. Uh, even more fortunate to have played on some stages with him. He was. He condescended to playing drums with our band on several occasions. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Oh yeah, it was fun. And uh, but Dave is a is a Grammy award winning musician, and. Uh, so let's just start there, Dave. I mean, uh, um, tell me about some of those experiences with uh, with PJ Morton and and uh, and you know yeah. Maxwell and and down the line, dude. Yeah, yeah. So um, the first major thing I did, I, I was able to tour with, with uh, Maxwell. Uh, I played with him for ten years. I started playing with him, I think, in twenty ten, and um, I was able to do uh, you know a couple tours. TV appearances, you know, things like that. You like VH1 storytellers. VH1 right? storytellers. Uh, did today's show with him. A um, few other things, you know, but yeah, that was the first part. But as far as PJ, uh, I've been knowing PJ probably about twenty years, um, and I was started playing with him, and uh, I think in twenty. I lost track of the years. Where's he from, man? Right? He's uh, from New Orleans. Okay. Yeah, New Orleans. And um, excellent, well-known, you know, musician, songwriter, pianist. Uh, but I, I actually met him here in Alabama um, probably about 20 years ago. He was here in town doing a, a show, and I just had some percussion and, and things with him. Well, with me. Yeah. And I was like, hey, do you, do you think I can sit in with you and stuff? And <laughs> he was like, huh? And then, you know, everybody in there, they's like, yeah, Dave, yeah, he can play. So so since then, you know, we had a, a friendship and, you know, you know, I've been playing with him since then. So yeah. That's an incredible album. Is, is the name of that album Gumbo, the one that won the? Yeah, uh, well, Gumbo was um, nominated and it didn't win. It was nominated for album of the year and then... Gumbo Unplugged, which was uh, a live version of Gumbo with um, with an orchestra and twenty two pieces, that was uh, the one that actually won a Grammy. Y'all need to look that up. Yeah, I mean that that is some some funky gospel infused mm -hmm. soulful music. Yeah, it's, it is. It's a heck of a project. It man. is. It is. So I was you know thankful and fortunate to be a part of that that uh, you know recording and that that project and you know from that he won a, a Grammy from that and then two or three years later he won a gospel album of the year and I was a part of that as well. How about when the guy that wins a Grammy mm -hmm. you know a lot of times they get on there and thank everybody and they don't thank the musicians that played on the album mm -hmm. but how about when PJ Morton wins a Grammy mm -hmm. and he mentions your name on <laughs> I, you know, on TV. I was expecting not to get I mean I got up out of my chair. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting really not to because I was you know more he didn't of, have to. Yeah, he didn't have to, but, you know, he's the type of person he wants to acknowledge, you know, everybody who, you know, was a part of his journey. So, yeah. I, you know, I, I was very appreciative of that and everything. So, you know, I I didn't 
expect it, but I was like, cool, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So all that was like, I mean, the um, the thing with PJ, the last thing you did was it was like it was 2018, 2019, something uh-huh. like that? Yeah. So it's probably the last significant thing you did before the big COVID shutdown, mm-hmm. right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, moving into um, to the, the COVID situation, that mm-hmm. period of time that we all had to experience, uh, mm-hmm. and it was just difficult to muster up the creative flow. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had some particular challenges. Yeah. I, uh, uh, when COVID started, you know, the COVID pandemic hit, um, I, I started uh, having, you know, vision problems. So my long story short, I started, you know, losing my, my vision in my eyes slowly and um i i knew it was some issues because i had a couple of issues but i didn't know it was going to you know lead to where it is now so where so, are you now bro uh i have low vision so i you know i probably have maybe less than 10 percent vision i can still see things but not clearly my depth reception is is you know not not strong and you know it's just it's pretty much like i'm looking through smoke or i can just see images yeah shadows yeah and i just see you know really just two colors white and black gotcha right now and gray you know gray sometimes so yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so uh that's a great segue into uh Mm -hmm. the most maybe the most interesting thing about you and that's saying something because you're pretty interesting (laughs) to (laughs) to, uh you know uh, this this whole idea of synesthesia. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're a synesthete, mm-hmm. and uh, and so uh, I can wax poetic about that. But mm-hmm. but tell tell the folks what your experience is. Uh, so now that your physical vision is diminished mm-hmm. about eighty five or ninety percent, mm-hmm. you're sort of more aware of or more reliant on this. I'll call it a sixth sense that you have. Yes. yes. So so what's that like? Well. Um it's something that I actually knew was there, but I didn't know it existed. You know, it was. You didn't like, know how to name you. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I would always, when I'm playing drums or anything, I would, people are always talking about, you looking around and stuff, because I see kind of like watermarks of colors. Wow. Um, when I'm playing music. And most of the time, my eyes are closed when I'm so playing. So, like when you're up on a ride symbol or something, yeah. you're like seeing a different color yeah. from yeah. When, you're, when you're. Yeah, depending on the the timbre and and the the pitch and stuff like mm-hmm. that, um, I see different colors. And what and just like uh, for the sake of uh, of uh, giving people a a verbal vision, if you will, mm-hmm. I mean, like you're going around the trap kit. I mm-hmm. mean, what what does that maybe look like? Splashes of color wise. Well, it it really depends on what I'm playing. Yeah, and um, you know the 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 mood, the music, you know everything. Like mostly. Songs that are, it's hard to describe, but if it's kind of energetic and, and upbeat, I see kind of bright colors. If mm-hmm. the mood is kind of bold or dark, then I see kind of like earth tone colors. I got if you. that makes sense. Yeah, it makes total sense. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I see green, it, and it depends on, you know, the, the like I said, the, the sounds I'm hearing and the the energy from the, the audience. You know, it's a lot of factors. Yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. but but you but it's been a, a consistent theme even before you mm-hmm. had physical blindness. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So at, um, you're you're um, we've got a big project here at the Arts Council mm-hmm. that we're working on. Yes. It, it's it revolves around a, an art exhibit mm-hmm. for the blind and low vision folks, a mm-hmm. tactile exhibit, mm-hmm. and we're calling it Color and Sound. Yes. See, the whole exhibit is being supported by the Alabama State Council of the Arts, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Caring Foundation, and of course the Shelby County Arts Council. And uh, the, the, the title of that um, particular exhibit and the series that we're doing is all about uh, named after a project that you did. Yes, called Color and Sound. Color and Sound. Yes. So, uh, what, what's that? What's that deal like? Um, well, Color and Sound was actually I was trying to give people some therapy uh, during the pandemic because, you know, people were losing their their jobs, homes, you know, uh, worried about income and stuff like that. So I just, and then, and in fact, I was, I, I was aware I was losing my sight as well. Yeah. So you it was some therapy. Yeah. Yeah. So just something that the kind to, you know, t- to calm everybody down and just, you know, everybody was going through anxiety and, and, just pretty much, you know, therapy for just 
for everybody, including myself. Giving yourself hope, man. Yeah, yeah. Give yourself something to look forward to, something to, yeah. some, uh, you know, sense of a brighter day, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, me along, you know, I'm sure a lot of people, but I can feel different energies in the atmosphere. I can feel that everybody was frustrated and, and scared and, you know, um, didn't know what was going to happen. Everybody was, pan- was panicking and stuff like that. So yeah. I just wanted to do an album to kind of, you know, relax everybody and, say you know give everybody hope and just say hey you know just we'll be okay just relax you know the sonic massage yeah yeah yeah, yeah. right yeah. exactly kind of relax everybody chill mm-hmm. them out mm-hmm. yeah i mean that's a that's back to the theme you know mm-hmm. uh, uh, imagine create and inspire mm-hmm. which at the end of the day produces hope and mm-hmm. hope's the opposite of destitute thinking exactly and uh you know and uh, so i i that's why i love these conversations mm-hmm. that uh it always comes down to the fact is that making music, making mm-hmm. art, is yeah. not optional. Yeah, it makes us human. It's mission yes. critical. Yes, and uh, and so you know this idea that you were going to dispense therapy, if you will, to other folks started inside. Mm-hmm. I mean, you started doing it for yourself, mm-hmm. and then when you do that for yourself, you assume, hey, it's got to be good for somebody else out yeah, there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I've I've gotten you know uh, messages, and emails from all people from all walks of life, even like brain surgeons from, from overseas or emailing me saying they listen to my album, they listen to it before, you know, yeah. it helps relax them. Um, of course, artists, you know, they, they enjoy the album, uh, yeah. musicians. One of my friends, um, he told me it was a, a painting of sound. Yeah, yeah. When he listened to it, he said it, it's just, it's a painting of sound. Yeah. And that's, it. you know, I kind of wanted to, I knew that's what it was, but I couldn't, I didn't know how to describe it, but he hit it, you know, yeah, on the head with that. It's a painting of sound. Yeah, I like that, mm-hmm. man. It, you know, it makes sense to me. I, and it's In some ways, it's stronger mm-hmm. than, I don't want to, you know, a lot of visual artists are my friends and cohorts and, mm-hmm. and maybe listen to this. And, of course, I'm a visual artist as well. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, the, the weakness, if there is a weakness mm-hmm. in visual art, is that, I mean, when you're done, you're done. It's mm-hmm. hanging on the wall, and of course, people can interpret it differently. Exactly. But you, as an artist, can't put it out any differently. Exactly. The beautiful thing about what you're doing, or what people do with improvisational music, mm-hmm. is uh, it's they they do paint a picture, mm-hmm. a sonic picture, every time they 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 play, and yeah. uh, and it does affect people therapeutically in that mm-hmm. uh, in that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with with my music, you know, I try to write songs. I I look at music as you know. In dimensions, I look look at it as, you know, dimensions. I look at it up, down, in, out, and then temperatures and all that. It's just weird how I try to, you know, yeah, express myself through good, music. Man. It's so, multidimensional. Yeah, when I when I create music, I wanna I want people to be able to close their eyes and and see what they're hearing. I want people to to see with their ears. It's like they walked into your. Yeah, your environment. Yeah, you exactly. So it's, uh, it's multiple, multi-dimensional senses. Exactly. Kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Can you see? I mean, this is a matter of curiosity to me, mm-hmm. and and you don't have to mm-hmm. a- uh, answer this other than any way you feel it. Mm-hmm. But can you see those dimensions more clearly now that your physical side is diminished? I've I've been always I've always been able to see them, but it's a lot stronger now. Yeah. Since, since you know one sense is weakened. Um, you know, my, my intuition, uh, senses have gotten stronger, you know, my hearing, my, my sense of smell, everything has gotten stronger. (laughs) Like Spider-Man. Yeah. (laughs) It's funny because my dad is like, you always, you hear stuff. I'm like, who turned on the TV, uh, next door? And I'm just, I just joke. (laughs) (laughs) Who turned on the TV downstairs? Y'all hear that? He's like, huh? What? What? Well, speaking of your dad, mm-hmm. Ed, he's he's kind of famous around town. Yeah, and that's where you get your musical heritage from. Yeah, yeah. Him and you know my my mother's side of the family as well. Um, I'm related to uh, musicians such as like Adolphus Bell. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a a cousin, and you know just different musicians yeah. on both sides of the family. So I've been fortunate to grow up around artists and and my dad's side of the family, the Crenshaw side. Um, mm-hmm. It's not just musicians. We we have people that are like involved in the arts, like visual artists, mm-hmm. dance, 
acting, yeah, writing. Yeah, I saw was it a cousin of yours or yeah. something at the School yeah. of Fine Arts? It was... Well, yeah, she, she um, Rachel Lockhart mm-hmm. is a cousin. She, um, she's at Juilliard right now. Wow. And uh, she's actually a contestant on uh, So You Think You Can Dance now. Ah, uh, my wife will be all about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and her mother is yeah. uh, well-known. I got to shout out my cousin, Jackie Lockhart. Yeah. So she's a well-known, you know, um, choreographer and, and dancer and actor. So. Yeah, everybody making art. Mm-hmm. Igniting people's imaginations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. and it's funny because we all communicate with each other. We like, hey, she like, hey, cousin, what you doing? I'm like, hey, cousin, what you doing? <laughs> so she inspires. They inspire me. Um, yeah, you know, I inspire them. She she calls me all the time. Like, I'm seeing this in my head. I'm seeing, you know. Yeah, you know how. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice to have those kind of yeah. people that you can have those conversations mm-hmm. with. You know, they yeah. have another level other than yeah. you know how you doing. Yeah, and I have, you know, other cousins, you know, um, J.W. and Robert and, and um, you know, John, all my cousins, you know, they write and produce and, you know, everybody's just, just I'm just proud of everybody. Everybody's doing things. Yeah, my, my brother, Dwayne, you know, he's a musician and he's a visual artist. Uh, my oldest brother, Edward, you know, he plays drums, so I'm, I'm just surrounded by arts. Yeah, I bet your family reunion is a... It's rocking. Oh yeah, yeah. We. <laughs> it's funny. My dad, he he jokes because most of the uh, people in my family are are percussionists. So it's probably like two or three horn players. Yeah, he plays a trombone. Yeah, right? he's As brass he's player. Yeah, tuba and, and trombone. But yeah, yeah. Most years ago, we used to get together on both sides of the family, just have big percussion jam sessions and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I think you posted a couple of mm-hmm. those in the past. I enjoyed mm-hmm. those, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, you know, I've always known you as a percussionist, as a mm-hmm. drummer, great, great kit drummer. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you played with Two Blue and the Lucky Stills a few mm-hmm. times, that was that was some good times. And, yeah. And, uh, and you do the best walk around <laughs> uh, solo Drum yeah. solo, anybody is yeah. legendary. Thank you. you know, playing Coke bottles and <laughs> mic stands and people's heads and drink bottles and everything. And I, and miss, all I miss my buddy Dave Gones, man. Miss miss him. Yeah, man. Yeah. Dave Tito Goins. He's yeah, a, he's a, we all miss him. He's yeah, a, he was a great guy, and he he's actually, you know, influenced me in a lot of playing and stuff like that. So he he's missed dearly. From my heart. So. Yeah, he thought a lot of you, man. Mm-hmm. I know that for real. Yeah. I mean, that, that was a, he always when we played, it was always an honor for him to mm-hmm. share the stage with you, and so it. Uh, mm-hmm. We we all sure sure miss him. You know the. Um, it surprised me, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, after all those years of knowing you, mm-hmm. you know, instructor of percussion at the Alabama Blues Project and mm-hmm. playing with various bands, famous and not so famous. Mm-hmm. Um, that you play the guitar as well, man. Yeah. Did you just pick that up or? No, I actually, um, I, I started plucking on a guitar in sixth grade. And the reason why, because, um, my teacher, uh, Miss Clark, she, uh, she gave me an acoustic guitar. Yeah. And she said, you're going to be, you know, successful in music and I want you to have this. So oh. that's how I started playing guitar. That's awesome. About mm-hmm. what grade was that? Uh, sixth grade. Sixth grade. You yeah. might have said that. I missed it. Wow, sixth and, grade. And then, you know, my uh, my uh, middle school band, well, it started in elementary school. Uh, uh, Daryl Curry, he, yeah. taught, he started me on drums. Well, no, let me go back. My father started me on, he wanted me to play strings, so he would bring home, like, you know, a violin and mm-hmm. different things. I didn't like the violin, so he gave me a cello. And that's the first thing I, I started <laughs> learning on cello. I had no idea, mm-hmm. man. And then, you know, my, um, from after that, after that my, my drum instructor and music teacher, Daryl Curry, um, who my father taught in high school, he, he started me on drums when I was, like, in, um, I think, second or third grade. Wow, man. And then, you know, from that point, my middle school music teacher, uh, Glenn Sears, Mr. Sears, um, I, you know, he... See, man, yeah. the fact that you can remember all those names, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of like that. I mean, so all you mm-hmm. music teachers and art teachers out there mm-hmm. that you might think what you're doing, spending an hour a week with a kid or mm-hmm. or whatever, or five hours a week, mm-hmm. I mean, 
what you're doing is significant. Yeah. You, I mean, inspiring uh, a kid's imagination mm-hmm. and encouraging them to create mm-hmm. will stick with them for a life. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, and it, even so in this digital age, even yeah. more so maybe. Yeah, and I, you know, even you know, to Dr. Frank Adams, you know, he he um, <clears throat> inspired me a lot um, when it comes to like uh, jazz and all types of music. You know, mm-hmm. I would my my dad would take my brother and I to the um, uh, Carver Theater on Saturdays, and we would you know take drum lessons or or just learn how to play jazz. You know, Dr. Adams was was a big influence in my life. And um, yeah, just Mr. Blaylock at at Huffman High School. Mm-hmm. Um, you no, know, he 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 inspired me, and you know, just you didn't get in trouble much, did you? No, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a band nerd. So. Yeah, too busy making music. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you know, uh, we got this uh, two we, two significant dates related to this color and sound thing. Mm-hmm. On the 28th of July, we're going to open up the exhibit, okay. and you're going to come give an artist talk that day, kind of more of an intimate sit-down mm-hmm. with your guitar, kind of mm-hmm. we're, like we're doing now, except with an audience. Mm-hmm. We're, going to, we're going to reveal the exhibit mm-hmm. to folks. And then on the 6th of August, mm-hmm. sometime after that, we're, you're going to actually perform Color and Sound in, in the Song Theater here yes. at the Arts Council. Yes. What you got in your mind, how, how that's going to go, man? Well... You know how my mind works, Bruce. <laughs> so what you're saying is you don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have an idea, but I'm like, yeah. okay, should I do? Should I do this? Should I do? Okay. But it's it's gonna. I'm planning it to be you know fun and energetic and and we're gonna show the visuals. Yeah, big on visuals. stage. Mm-hmm. And that, so if you got low vision, even so, you'll be able to see the the, the this dynamic imagery that you yeah. put together for this video. Mm-hmm. And then of course you're gonna uh, figure out how to mm-hmm. perform it live. Yeah. I'm I'm going to perform it, but I just want to do, I want to kind of redo the album, but you know, yep, you, you, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, got a lot got a lot of room for improv. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a be a fun performance. So, um, you know, even for the people who who cannot see a low vision, they'll be able to feel. That's my main thing. I want be I want everybody to feel the music. Yeah. If if you can't you know really see it or anything, I want you to be able to feel it. Right on. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Getting that Dave Crenshaw six cents. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And spotty senses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Dave, you know, this this color and sound thing is going to be great. Mm-hmm. And we want people to come out on August 6th and see this multidimensional performance. But, you know, I was surprised to find out in recent months, I guess you'd say, mm-hmm. that Dave Crenshaw could sing. I didn't know that, man. I mean, I knew you were writing some music all along, yeah. but I didn't know you could sing. And I and I, I confess I didn't know till uh, about a year ago that you played guitar. Yeah. So uh, we talked we talked about that a little bit how you got started. But mm-hmm. anyway, bringing those two things together, you've been songwriting quite a bit lately. Yes. Yeah. What you working on? I've I've been working um actually on three projects at one time. So uh, in November on November seventh, I did a a live uh, album with just songs that I wrote uh, during the pandemic break, and um, that's when I kind of. Uh, introduced myself as a, a vocalist and songwriter and, uh, you know, uh, on other instruments besides the drums. Everybody's used to seeing me on drums. Yeah. And then um, now I'm working on a studio album. It's a story of my musical uh, family heritage on, you know, mother and, si- right. mother and father side of the family. Right. Uh, you know, that's dated back to like the 30s and all the way up to, to now. So I just wanted awesome, to tell man. a story awesome, of, of, of the music and things that I grew up listening to that influenced me to write my music and, you know, everything. So this stuff happens to you during the pandemic mm-hmm. over the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know that maybe you went down the rabbit hole a few times worried about it, but mm-hmm. uh, you come out more creative than ever. Yes. Yeah. So, man, uh, why don't you take us out? We'll play, an, play, a, play a tune from your one of your latest projects, brother. Okay. Um... <clears throat>
you were always near When I was weak You made me strong Because your love will always be yeah, Stronger than gold Said. You made me smile Because you're always be yeah, Stronger than gold For listening to Imagine, Create, Inspire, the podcast. For more information on the Shelby County Arts Council, please visit www.shelbycountyartscouncil.com. 